Hello and welcome to Easy Projects. So today we'll have a closer look at the constant current slash DC load that I have been working on. So I have made a small PCB as you can see here. But you might also notice that there's a lot of batch capacitors around here and that is because I had a few problems with it. So we'll go through those also. Well, the whole idea with this load is that it is Arduino controlled, so I of course made it so that it can plug directly into an Arduino. Like this. And I added this header here, so I can run a cable to an LCD display. Or you can also just plug it in directly. So that is handy for debugging. And I did a lot of debugging, so glad I made that decision. So what you don't see on here is the power MOSFETs and the, the heatsink, of course. And I have that separately. So when I'm done with testing and fiddling around, I'll just cut the heatsink around here. So it will fit inside the box. So this is pretty much the same as I used in the last video, except that I added another in-channel MOSFET and an extra balance resistor. I changed the balance resistors to uh, 0.12 ohms and I use 4.39 ohm resistors in parallel to give me almost 0.1 ohm, but that's good enough. So this have actually caused me a lot of problems and I think I'll have to, to redo the the way I'm driving these MOSFETs. And we'll get back to that later on. So we can just go through the schematics real quick here. Down in the bottom here we have the Arduino and that is what is controlling the whole thing. We power it from 12 volts and it will in return spit out 5 volts that we can use for the rest of the circuit. Also a 3.3 volt rail but we don't really use that. So if we start from the bottom we have the temperature sensor here. And that is just a standard temperature sensor that will send out uh, 10 millivolts per degree Celsius. And up here we have the fan driver. And that is driven by a PWM signal from the Arduino. So we also can run it at lower RPMs. Over here we have the LCD screen. We have the contrast adjustment. And we have a driver for the backlight. And then we have this funny little thing here. And that is actually the first problem that I ran into. I already solved this problem in the last video, but I didn't mention it, so I'll just do that now. So as I've said previously, I'm using a 16-bit DAC, and that is the MAX5217. And I'm using a 24-bit ADC, and that is the NAU7802. And when I bought these, I of course checked that I could run them on the same I2C bus. And I quickly saw that the DAC has a pin to set the address, so... I could just choose a different one for that than the ADC. But what I didn't notice was that these bloody decks have a broadcast address, which simply means that you can send any command to that address and all the decks will accept that data. And that broadcast address just happens to be the same as the ADC. So whatever I try to send to this ADC, the deck will listen as well and it will just make up garbage inside itself because it takes all kind of random data that it doesn't know what to do with. So I just had to put this transistor in here to disable the clock whenever I'm writing to the ADC. So I, I disable the clock to the deck when I'm writing to the ADC. And when I write to the deck I can just leave the ADC connected to the bus because the deck has a, a different address. So I was afraid that this could actually cause some problems, but it seems to work just fine, so... Okay, so the DAC will take a reference voltage, and it will take the data from the Arduino, and it will make a, a DAC value. I just called it DAC here. And this DAC value will be sent to the op amp, but we'll go back to that later. We also have the ADC, and that will take a reference voltage as well, the same as the DAC. And it will take the ADC voltage in, and it will convert it to digital and send it to the Arduino. 
and then we have the reference IC itself that will take the 12 volts and it will drop it down to the reference voltage of 4.096 volts and over on this side here we have the same circuit as I described in the previous video it will take the DAC signal in it will get divided down, it will get fed to an op amp that will control the gate of the MOSFETs and I haven't actually drawn the MOSFETs on here because they are mounted on the heatsink and they shouldn't go on to the PCB so that will be this wire here going to all the gates and as you can see we also have the current sense resist on here and we have a feedback coming back to the op amp and that is this wire coming in here we also amplify this feedback voltage and send it to the ADC and I forgot to mention that we have also connected four buttons to the Arduino down here and they are also on a separate board and then we have some headers with minus 12 volts plus 12 volts 5 volts and we need three ground pins and up here we just have some capacitors for the different rails I went and connected the whole thing up so we can have a look at the problems that I had and you must excuse the power supply is a bit loud I really need to build a fanless one but but I haven't had time for that yet so so I used the exact same software as I did in the last video except that I changed the values for the DAC and the ADC to fit the new load sensor system up here and it seemed to work pretty well when I first connected it up but only until I got into the constant current menu here and I just set a load of zero and there's nothing connected to the MOSFETs by the way so it would show zero anyway and I press start and as you can see it is just showing garbage it uh, jumps between zero and 15 milliamps and occasionally it will just show 65,000 and something <coughs> and that is when it goes below zero and I thought well there must be introduced some noise into either these wires or there could be some noise on the reference or something so I went and measured it all with the oscilloscope but I didn't really seem to find anything serious but there was some occasional high frequency noise on some of the uh, rails and some of the signals so I went and put small and larger bypass caps on all those signals until they were just dead flat and as you can see it didn't help at all and I just sat there and scratched my head for a good while because I'm using nowhere near the full 24 bits of the ADC it's more like 14 or 15 bits that I'm actually using and I did some calculations on the noise here after I added all the capacitors and it turns out that I'm effectively getting about 10 bits of resolution and I mean that's what is inside one of these Arduinos and usually it's no problem to get the full 10-bit resolution out of an Arduino so I started thinking maybe I've connected something wrong on the ADC or something like that and I read through the data scene again and I couldn't seem to find anything so finally I decided to have a closer look at the noise and I logged about 1500 of these ADC readings and I plotted them onto a graph using the computer and this is what came up and I just went what the hell is going on here and I went to Google and did a search and I eventually found a forum with a guy posting the exact same problem and he also found the solution not in the datasheet for the device but in somebody else's code so it turns out there's actually some choppers and some clock frequencies inside the ADC that you have to turn off in order to get a useful reading and as it turned out they were not turned off by default and furthermore there's actually no explanation in the datasheet of what these jobbers and this uh, clock frequency does so we'll just go and update the firmware in the Arduino and let it reboot and just disconnect the main power
and voila we are bang on zero milliamps and uh, just to show you here we have all the available information for that register that was causing the problem I don't know about you but I didn't really get anything out of all this so I just went and connected the battery so we can test it a little bit further so if we go into constant current again and we set a current of 1 amp and we press start you can see it's a little bit out on the display over here about 1% we're getting 1009 milliamps but on the multimeter here it's pretty close we're only 3 milliamps out but that's actually on the low side so but the range on this is actually not perfectly linear because if we set it to 2 amps it's showing 2008 milliamps and 1.995 amps if we go to 3 amps we're at 3007 so this is dropping a little bit and almost 3 amps and I actually had a power supply hooked up and once we get to 8 amps this is spot on and this is only a little bit out so I can't just change the offset on this or the gain so it's a little trade-off unless I can find the reason why it is not linear and I have actually gone and calibrated the offset and the uh, gain on the ADC because that was a bit out when I first connected it up and the calibration actually turned out to be pretty easy you just have five registers that you can set two for the offset calibration a high and a low and it will just add whatever binary number you put in here to your ADC value and it can be made negative of course and the gain is also straightforward it's just a multiplier so it will multiply by this number you set here and you can see the default is set to 2 to the power of 0 which is 1 so we'll just multiply by 1 so another problem I had when I first connected this up was that this op amp wasn't stable at all whenever I tried to dial in a current it would just oscillate between the two rails so it will go from 0 amps to 8 amps 0 amps, 8 amps and so on and it would do it really really fast and the reason for that is when the signal gets out of this op amp it will go through this resistor to the gates of the MOSFETs and it will return the voltage drop across the sense resistor and that will be used as negative feedback but the problem is that when the signal leaves the op amp here and until it gets to this point here there will be some delay and of course this delay will make a phase shift between these two nodes here and this phase shift is what is causing the oscillation and well this is an area that I don't really know that much about but I managed to solve the problem by choosing the correct value of this resistor and these three caps that you see on the MOSFETs over there and I ended up using just under one kilo ohm here and one microfarad on each of the MOSFETs and as you saw I got it kind of stable but if the input voltage to the load is too high then it will still oscillate so I still have some work there before it's all good but I kind of came to the conclusion that I probably shouldn't have connected the gates of the MOSFET I probably should have used an knob amp for each MOSFET but again I'm not sure about that so if any of you have an idea to another solution you are welcome to post it and I'll take a look at it but I think my next step will be to add another dual knob amp here and just drive the other two MOSFETs from their own op amp and that will also give me a better way of controlling the power dissipation between the MOSFETs it is actually working pretty well this way but this one over here gets a little bit warmer than the other two but it is not much so this was just a short update video of the progress in the DC load and of course I will be back with the, another update when I get this to work a little bit better so thanks for watching this video and uh, if you like it please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel 
and see you for the next one.